Hello wonderful person, today we're going to be talking about a study that suggests something unusual is hiding in the dark voids of the universe, something that could be responsible for the mysterious dark matter. But all of this is like super complicated, so let's dissect this a little bit in more detail and welcome to Odeme. First of all, what exactly is dark matter? Um, at the moment, nobody really knows, but the best mathematical explanation that we have is from the very famous Albert Einstein. It's something that's coming from his field equation and he believed for the longest time until about 1932 that this was a mistake. It's this value right here. But then in 1932 when Edwin Hubble discovered that the universe was expanding, this value suddenly started to make sense. But scientists for decades believed that this value was actually zero. Oh, and yeah, one thing I forgot to mention is that this lambda represented the so-called repulsive force of the universe. Essentially, it's something to contradict the gravity, which would explain why the universe didn't just collapse after it was created. But in 1998, the scientists also discovered that it seems to be a value that's not a zero, it's actually positive, suggesting that the universe is not just expanding, it's also accelerating. And ever since then, this so-called dark energy, or the unknown energy, didn't really have a very good explanation. But this dark energy, alone of course with the dark matter, are currently the best explanations we have for what's sort of happening with the universe and what we're observing around us. Now, the dark matter is obviously a, a completely different story, but it does have more explanations and also more potential particles that could be responsible for the effects we're observing. On the other hand, dark energy, which as you can see represents about 68% of the entire universe, is a lot more mysterious. And here, this is where scientists currently don't really know how to explain it. There's really no good one theory to try to identify what's happening. And so most of the time what you'll hear theoretical physicists say is that this is just like a fundamental thing. It just happens because, well, it's in a mathematical formula. But not everyone is happy with this explanation, and most importantly because nowadays we're also having trouble explaining this expansion because this formula suggests that expansion is sort of uniform in every single direction. But the new observations from pretty much most of the modern studies suggest something completely different. The expansion is not uniform, it's accelerating but in different sort of speeds at different times, and there is something else going on here. Because of all of these unusual, unexplainable phenomena we're observing, the scientists, a lot of scientists today, are trying to see if there is something else happening. Specifically something that could maybe explain with some sort of a particle, some sort of an unusual object, or some other theory that existed for a very long time. And this is actually one such explanation. It's based on a theory from 1960s by the extremely brilliant Soviet uh, theoretical physicist Arist Gliner, who essentially proposed this unusual object that was sort of like a black hole, but in some sense was actually almost the opposite of a black hole. It wasn't a white hole, it was something he referred to as geode or generic object of dark energy. And these geodes from the outside would actually resemble black holes, but instead of having a tiny tiny singularity that's essentially like a really really massive object, these objects would be made out of dark energy, and here I'm going to take a little bit of artistic freedom and make them look like this. So these geodes, these unusual objects, would have very similar effects to black holes in some sense, they would still be able to absorb things, but they would also be repelling matter and would be creating these unusual effects that are literally dark energy. The mathematics of how these objects are created and maintained is actually very solid, there's nothing sort of unusual or extraordinary about them, but the extraordinary thing about these objects is how they affect the universe. So first of all, unlike black holes, which geodes would be mimicking in terms of physical appearance and also various other effects, they're still very sort of exotic and completely counterintuitive. One major difference here is that unlike black holes, these objects actually gain mass with time. And the way that they grow in mass and in size is through, well, kind of very similar to how the redshift works for, for example, light traveling across the universe. Today we know that with time and with space, light loses energy and becomes more redshifted. What most people don't realize is that something similar happens to mass. 
objects actually lose mass with time and with distance, and uh, this red shifting is apparent across the entire universe. But for massive objects, this effect is very, very minuscule. But for geodes, this is something that most likely increases their size and, of course, their effects on the universe as the time goes on. In other words, the scientists behind a lot of these different papers suggest that a typical geode that existed for billions of years would actually gain up to about 100 times more mass as uh, compared to when it was much, much younger. And that's simply from existing, from traveling across time and space, not even from absorbing anything. Now, as I mentioned, it's sort of counterintuitive and doesn't make sense, but a lot of different papers that came out in the last few years suggested that not only can these objects exist, but they also explained how all of these exotic objects could easily form in the beginning of the universe in the first few millions of years, essentially from direct collapse from the primordial matter. So some objects would create stars, some objects would create black holes, but around 2% of these objects could technically create geodes. This is mathematically possible. And if these 2% create these geodes, it would completely explain all the dark energy effects we're observing today, and all of this technically, mathematically makes complete sense. But these geodes can also collide with one another, and their collisions would look very, very similar in terms of gravitational wave uh, interaction to what we're observing from black hole collisions. One of the first papers that came out after the original unusual detection from a LIGO detector a few years ago was essentially about the possibility of one of these black holes, or possibly even both of them, being so-called geodes. The reason for that is that because they were just a little bit too massive, they didn't make sense. Most scientists never expected to find black holes of that mass. And the most recent detection of the unusually massive black holes even makes more sense for them to be geodes. Essentially, because the recently detected black holes were roughly around 5 billion years old, this would give them enough time to grow in mass if they were geodes. And this would explain what we're observing. At the same time, because of the unusual observation when the collision occurred, many of these things are a lot easier to explain if these objects are these exotic geodes and not black holes. But that's of course something we can't really prove right now. We know for a fact that black holes exist, I mean we have an actual picture of one, but we don't know if geodes are real and if they're even possible. Only mathematically possible. So for now, we're just going to make an assumption that they do exist. So what does the new paper suggest? Well, the scientists crunched the numbers, they did a little bit of analysis and discovered that if you were to take all of these geodes and place them in the voids around the universe, which we found a lot of, including of course the nearby local void that's not marked here, and also if we were to assume that about 2% of all of the stars in the early universe created these geodes, it would totally explain the effects we're observing from the so-called dark energy. In other words, what these scientists are proposing is that inside of every one of these voids, there are just as many of these geodes as there are stars in the universe. And each of them is sort of responsible for, well, first of all, interacting with one another, but also pushing things apart in the universe itself. But since they do resemble black holes from the outside, it would be very challenging for us to prove their existence until we discover more about them and their exotic nature. But this recent study from University of Hawaii researchers also identified a few other very unusual features that could maybe help us identify these objects in the future. For example, certain ultra-massive quasars or very powerful galactic objects really far away sometimes are way too massive. This mass cannot really be explained with modern physics. And in this case, maybe these are also very, very massive geodes, producing some really strange and unusual effects that could be different from typical black hole effects. But unfortunately, because these objects are so far away, it's somewhat difficult to tell for sure. At the same time, mathematically, the scientists also realized that these objects would have a strange spinning layer above the surface. And this spinning layer, depending on the speed, affects the behavior of a geode. If this layer spins relatively slow, these geodes will most likely start colliding and combining into larger and larger objects. But as they're doing so, as they're growing larger and larger and as they're gaining momentum and start spinning faster and faster, at some point, as soon as they reach really, really high 
rotation velocities, they will start repelling objects around them and essentially acquire these very powerful dark energy effects, while at the same time also affecting one another and repelling one another, creating these void bubbles that we're observing in the universe. In other words, if such a geode, for example, passed very close to a galaxy, it might disrupt a typical galaxy like the Milky Way and destroy it completely. But because all of these geodes are stuck inside of these voids that were most likely created because of these interactions, they for the most part only interact with one another and nearby matter that they repel, creating these very very unusual empty bubbles. But naturally this would also explain why none of these geodes are destroying our galaxy for example, why nothing around us seems to be repelled and destroyed by these objects. And so if these phenomena can be somehow confirmed, this would create a completely new class of, well, everything. This would most likely redefine our physics again and would allow us to slowly start understanding the universe a little bit better. But just like with the initial discovery of black holes, we kind of have to be careful here and take this step by step. A lot of new research and observations are needed and the observational proof here is absolutely crucial before we can definitely tell if these objects exist or not. At the same time, different types of black hole collisions, for example, could one day help us identify if any of these objects are geodes after all by looking at the actual ringing effect of the black hole collisions. Once we get better at identifying these effects, we'll probably have better answers. For now though, we can only assume that maybe this exists, but also maybe not. If, however, they do exist, it would suddenly provide a very, very good explanation to a lot of things we observe in the universe, including dark voids, including dark energy, and of course explain why the universe itself is expanding at different rates in different places. All of this one day might make sense, for now though, it's still just dark to us, we don't really know much about it. Which is of course why we still have so much to learn and so much to discover. Once we discover more, I'll make sure to follow this up with another video. Until then, you can check out the paper in the description below, maybe subscribe, maybe share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye bye And if you'd like to support this channel, you can also support this channel on Patreon or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description below. Thank you.